High five. What's that called? Blew it up! It's blowing it up! Hey everybody, Gil here from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And before we get started in this week's video, I'd love to ask you a couple of questions. you would be thrilled if you would just put the uh, answers in the comments below. But I have a couple questions. The first one is, would you like to see these videos a little bit shorter? They tend to be about 10 to 14 minutes long, and I'm curious if you would like to see them compressed into a shorter um, format. That's the first question. The second one is, we get a lot of questions and a lot of comments via Facebook and even on our blog. Um, just general questions about moving aboard or maybe a little bit about our story and how we got to this place, like what, what, that we decided we wanted to live on a boat. Um, a couple of people have made the comments that they need some of this sort of encouragement to move on and do something similar in their life because they want to, but they're a little afraid to, or frankly, they think other people are going to think they're a little bit nuts or they're not sure what their family will think about it. And I'd be happy to share those as well. So I'm curious, please leave the comments down below. Two questions. One, would you like to see the video shorter? If so, about how long? Uh, and two, would you like for us to do questions and answer sessions where we uh, post some questions either in videos with other topics or just do Q&A type, um, type videos as well. So before we make that decision, love to hear your comments. Again, please leave them down below. And in this week's video, we are going to jump into a couple of topics. This week was our Independence Day. The 4th of July is the, the, the day that the U.S. celebrates their independence, sharing that for those of you outside of the U.S. Um, and we typically celebrate that with fireworks and barbecues and hanging out with friends. So for us, that was Tuesday this week, and, um, and we did go and see a little fireworks show. There was a nice little firework display. They floated it out on a barge. It was really kind of nice so we could sit waterfront and watch the fireworks. It was actually beautiful, and it was fun to watch, except for one thing the mosquitoes were unbearable so as soon as it was over we were like out of there um, but anyway we'll show a little bit of that and then um, over that course of a couple of days I was off work for a few days I went ahead and did some scraping and sanding and varnishing of the decorative scroll work on the bow of the boat uh, it was hours worth of work but I'll end up doing this in time-lapse just to give you a, a sense of what it looked before and after looked like and and frankly to see how hard it is to sand something that's over your head while standing on top of the dinghy it was not easy my arms were sore so a couple of this is over a few days because I could do that for a couple of hours and then my arms just felt like they weighed a ton uh, out of shape so I hope you enjoy this week's video and again I look forward to the comments down below please do leave them give us a thumbs up share this with your friends let us know because we want to really make these videos better more about what you'd like to see as well and if the length of them is too long and maybe you're not getting to the end of them by all means share it with us thanks everybody so here's what we do. I end up taking the dinghy, I pull it around. This time Chaz decided she wanted to join me. <clears throat> but I just stand up on top of the seat of the dinghy and I've got a small hand scraper. Thank you Mads from Sail Life. You suggested this scraper in one of your videos and I love this thing. It's a Banco scraper, uh, about one inch wide. It works phenomenally for getting old varnish, even epoxy off of off the surface of wood and it gets good and sharp. So it does a wonderful job of doing this. So you can see what I've done. I basically just get on the dinghy, I stand up here and I start scraping and try and go in the direction of the grain as much as I can. It's not always easy to be perfectly candid with you. You get a sense for the amount of time it takes um, and you can kind of see the motion, right? So you see just how much you're having to continually work when you're doing something like this. Well, it's dark. We're gonna call it an evening and do some more tomorrow. So I'm actually sitting in the driver's seat of the dinghy and you can see how low I am as I go around this. Um, I just went ahead and a lot of times I don't even start the dinghy here. I just pull it along the side of the boat just because it's easier. But you can see by the, the wood up top, I really let this weather about, about a month has gone by since I scraped that the first time. And now I'm coming back and I just stepped up onto the seat. So I'm now on the seat and even with the top of the, um, the tubes themselves. It's now a matter of scraping away.
it's another day past, and at this point, I am now um, going to come out and start with the sander. Um, I'm, this, I think this is actually on the morning of Fourth of July, and I didn't want to make a lot of racket in the marina, so uh, I had just finished scraping this by hand yesterday. It still looked pretty good. I just wanted to get um, a nice, smooth finish for the varnish, so all I really needed to do at this point was go over this with 220 grit sandpaper. So I gave it a quick and easy light sand. I didn't go, I didn't go nuts with this. Uh, I'm going to be putting enough layers of varnish on here. I felt like I would build up the smoothness of it. Uh, and I do subscribe to this um, this theory of I want this to look good from 10 or 20, 20 feet away. I, I don't, this isn't going to be on a showpiece in a museum. Uh, so I want it to be functional, I want it to be protected, and I want it to look good. And yeah, if you get within a couple inches of it and you see that there's a little drip here or on there, I'm not losing any sleep over it. Now, I think I posted a blog post a while ago, how to varnish just shy of perfection. You know, so often we look at and we get tips and tricks of how to do everything just perfect. I didn't need perfection, I just wanted good. You guessed it, the next step, blue tape. I hate doing this, but frankly if you do it, it takes time, but prep work is everything. If you get the blue tape tight, if you get it sealed right along the edge of the hull, it allows you to paint this stuff without getting runs all over. And quite frankly, the vast majority of things I'm having to scrape are where, for years, whoever had worked on this boat in the past didn't, like, didn't usually do this. There are drips and runs on all kinds of surfaces that weren't intended. So while I don't mind my boat not looking perfect from more than 15 feet away, I don't like there to be varnish running down the side of the hull or on the bronze or there's just so many places where um, somebody didn't take the time to do this kind of prep work so you'll notice I put the tape on the boat as soon as I put the coat of varnish on I peel this stuff right off while it's still wet so it doesn't harden it doesn't get stuck behind it um, frankly this extra 15 or 20 minutes of effort leads to a lot better results so I definitely do this so here we go blue taping away you'll notice I have a pretty small can here I am just using a um, spar varnish. Now it's not a spar ure urethane. In the past I've used Helmsman spar varnish. Uh, I'm sorry, I've used Hel Helmsman um, spar urethane and in this case it's truly a spar varnish. Uh, I have a couple of different brands that we'll be trying here pretty soon. Uh, I've got Latonka Noise uh, which we'll be doing on the tow rail and the bowsprit but I started with this and I want to finish both sides with this. So this is the first coat, only about a dozen more to go. So in the middle of all of this work, I realized I needed a couple of things from the store. So I ran into Harbor Freight. I buy um, those little disposable chip brushes for doing epoxy work and stuff, and I buy them at Harbor Freight. They're dirt cheap. I don't know. It's like, they're like seven bucks a dozen or something like that, um, and it's a lot cheaper than spending you know two three dollars a piece for them at West Marine. Um, so when I went in there, they were playing Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train on the radio in the store. And I was, I was kind of teasing. I had the three-year-old grand squid with me, Swabby. And, and as we were walking, I said, hey, this is Ozzy Osbourne. This is good music, isn't it? I looked down, and she's doing the headbanging thing. Now, we don't listen to this very often. And she darn sure wasn't a, 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 even alive or a thought of when, when heavy metal 80s hair bands were in style and the whole headbanging thing was common. So it was so funny that just hearing that music made her want to do that. I had to turn around and film it. So I got a little bit of that clip, too. I'll give you some context for what you're about to see. I hope you enjoyed the video this week, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and click the subscribe button in the upper right hand corner. Thanks everybody, safe sailing. Uh, what do you I want, want it. What do you want to say? I want it right here. You want the microphone on you? Yeah. Now you can't walk away, okay? Alright, look at the camera, what do you want to say? Happy dreamers! Happy dreamers! You can't touch it, it'll make too much noise. Try it again. Happy dreamers! Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And please, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.